相変わらずだなこんな非常時にまで頑固じじいだぜ Dark Souls has a lot of games, and well, they all can't be original, right? Just recently, I covered a theory that brought to light the many similarities that Dark Souls 1 and The Ring City share, and well, I thought, why not find more? Today, we are looking at many of Dark Souls' inspirations. I decided to start at sound effects, and you can hear them being reused throughout all their games. To start, the Shinobi Execution and Ember Restored sound effects are virtually the same, one's just higher pitched than the other. Also, Smo's laugh is a modified version of Fat Official's laugh. <laughs> Not to mention many enemy sounds are being reused, so we'll play those right now. Retrieve an article from my corpse. I must retrieve an article from my corpse. But these sound effects aren't just reused within their games. You can find them in other media, such as The Thing. I mean, what are the odds Dark Souls has the same sound effect from a 1982 American movie? I might be overreacting, but I find this really interesting. Take a listen. Also, I'm not saying from software is stealing these sound effects, they're probably just using some sound library. But with that being said, there's a lot more, so here's a little compilation. Okay, now that we're done with that, let's move on to something a little more noticeable, such as reused animations. And although many have problems with this, I don't mind it. I feel like it gives a sense of familiarity between the games, and actually while researching, I was surprised by the lack of reused content. Instead of porting stuff from their previous games, they'll take the same idea but improve or alter it slightly. You can see this in healing, rolling, and bonfire resting. Although they do reuse weapon movesets, but I don't know what they would change. RB Frosty actually made a video on this where he compares animations, so please check him out, it saved me a lot of time. But that's it. All I could really find were articles complimenting the devs. I mean, why can't they be lazy? Not even the sliding animation was the same. I don't know, maybe I'll have better luck in the environments. Well, after researching, I found that, uh, a beer can can be found in Dark Souls 2, but actually there seems to be no reused assets or similar rocks. This is great news and I'm happy From Software is importing stuff from their previous games. Now, there might not be reused assets, but you can find some obvious themes in their environments. One is the dreaded poison swamp, which they love to keep adding back, cause, well, I don't know. But you can find it in Demon Souls, Dark Souls, Dark Souls 2, Dark Souls 3, Bloodborne, and Sekiro. So, all of their games. To their credit, some of them aren't swamps, but they do hold the same tone. There's also areas that appear twice, such as Anor Londo, The Pain and World, and Firelink Shrine. But these feel more plot-related, and I wouldn't consider them actual entries. 
Also, on an off note, did you know that Priscilla's tower is in Ashes of Ariandel? I mean, it's sitting right there, I don't know how I missed it. But going back, have you noticed the similarities between the Valley of Defilement and Blighttown? They both consist of scuffed woodworking that makes its way up a wall with beyond annoying enemies. To me, it seems that this area heavily inspired Blighttown. There's also the Prison of Hope and Ithril Dungeon which share similar architecture. Not to mention the Grand Archives and Duke Archives, along with Undead Settlement and Hemwick Charnel Lane. Oh, and on a final note, I saw this really cool theory that Archdragon Peak is actually the Undead Asylum. And after further inspection, they do share the same architecture and have that iconic walk to the cliff. Although that's where the evidence stops, but not from software's inspiration, and many environments are inspired by real-world locations. Most noticeably, Anne Orlando and Millen Cathedral. But in no way am I going to take credit for this, and there's actually a really good video by Probecat, 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 who did all the research and he shows the many places that inspired Dark Souls, so check it out, it's really interesting. Seasoned Dark Souls fans are probably shaking in their seat right now, and that's because I haven't covered Berserk. And wow, does Berserk carry a lot of influence, you could honestly consider Dark Souls to be a love letter to Berserk. The amount of inspiration I put quotations on that, because some of it's not inspired but straight up taken, Armor, environments, enemies, tone, and from what I've read, even lore. It's endless. I mean, check out the similarities between the Beast of Darkness and Solvin's Beast. There's no denying it, these are the same enemy. But for some background, Berserk is a Japanese manga that's set in a medieval Europe-inspired dark fantasy world. And you can already see the similar tones. This is shown through the Angel Knight whose helmet bears a resemblance to Zondark's, the Archdeacon who looks identical to the Slug Count, and the armor that the Outrider Knight and Guts, the main character, both wear. But those are just minor details, and I haven't even covered the bosses. And well, doesn't the Nameless King look oddly similar to King Geiseric? The shoulder-heavy armor, intertwined designs, and not to mention the iconic fluff of hair? Also, Dragon Slayer and Locust possess very similar helms that wear a boomerang-like piece along their brow. Mantis and Beetle are also two enemies that Guts faces and are described as one having thick armor and the other having speed. This has obvious correlations to Ornstein and Smo, whose fight is based solely around that mechanic. By the way, check out No2 who found all these similarities and they have really good articles comparing Berserk not just to Dark Souls 3 but all from software games. And yes, that includes Elden Ring, which in the two minutes of trailer manages to share a very similar helmet to that of a character in Berserk. Alright, weapons are a weird category, because from what I know, most of them, well, actually exist. And they're not just inspired, but directly copied. And on a separate note, did you know that there are three weapons that appear in every Souls game? And honestly, to no one's surprise, it's an axe, a spear, and a katana. Although, if you don't consider prosthetic tools a weapon, then it brings it down just to the katana. Now, going back, many of the weapons aren't just directly copied and do share similarities, such as the Flamberge, Scimitar, and Repeating Crossbow, with the crossbow functioning the same as the one in Berserk. Although, with Dark Souls having fairly realistic weapons, they're all inspired by something. Okay, so there's around 173 bosses in the Soul series, and I decided to categorize some of them in hopes of finding similarities. And, well, the first group I noticed was Old Men. And you fight a surprising amount of them in these games, with five of them being the final boss if you consider DLC and multiple endings. The second category is Dragon, it's self-explanatory, and big old dragon, it's usually never a fun fight. This third category is less of appearance and more of a fighting style, but it's that of a beast with a big old arm. It seems if Miyazaki's looking for a difficult boss and all the old men have been taken, he turns to a creature with a right hand slam. We see this in Vicar Amelia, the Cleric Beast, Lawrence, Manus, and Demon of Hatred. And I'm not saying these bosses are bad, I mean, I like Vicar Amelia. There's also the subset of bosses that are just very large animals. The Guardian Ape, Sif, Great Serpent, and That Big Fish. Now, this final category is the biggest, and it's of a slightly large knight. And as you can see, there is a lot of them. Oh wait, that was only Dark Souls 2? Here are the rest. This category fits for 23 bosses, and they're easily some of the best. You have Soul of Cinder, Nameless King, Ornstein and Smo, and not to mention Artorius. When you enter through that fog wall and you see a knight that's between the height of 7 to 9 feet, you know you're going to have a good fight. Oh, I also forgot about this last category, and it's of the Asylum Demon and Genichiro. These bosses are special in the way that they're not special, with them being used 8 times. 
Asylum Demon three times in Dark Souls 1 and twice in Dark Souls 3, and Genichiro three times in Sekiro. Although, Genichiro is a near perfect fight, so I don't mind fighting him three times over. Oh, and then there's the Category Fire boss, but what was I talking about? Oh yeah, Dark Souls is Inspirations. So there was a point to all that useless organization, and it allowed me to find some more similarities. And there's a lot. The start, the One Reborn, Rodden, and Mass of Souls are all amalgamates of rotting bodies. The Burn Ivory King, Outrider Set, and Ruined Sentinels all share a similar headpiece. The Bed of Chaos and Aldia, besides just being bad, have those weird wood tentacles. Aldrich and Phalanx with their Black Sludge, although this could be related to lore. Power Knight most likely inspired Iron Golem, not just because they both fall down, but because their design does look very similar. Lady Maria and Penetrator who both use blood magic to make their sword have that cool red effect. The Flame Lurker and Old Iron King whose boss fights could not be farther apart, but share a very similar body and head design. And come on, you're not telling me that Alvina isn't just copy and pasted from Alice in Wonderland? This one might be related to lore, but in the painted world you can find King Jeremiah, who's the old monk's summon. But there's also phalanx, so that area might just be referencing demon souls. Orin and the Blowdart Sniper, just because they both wear a basket on their head. Miss Noble, Slime Scholar, and Brain Sucker all have that moist bluish glow. And finally the Hydra and Ball of Snakes, which are both just a bunch of snakes in a ball. But we're not done yet, and we still have the endings, which all share the similar quality of not making sense. But in all seriousness, the formula is your character walking slowly and doing a simple task, such as sitting down, walking away, or staring off into the distance, with it all being narrated by a young woman. But that does it for this video. If you're aware of any other similarities or inspirations, please comment it. I'd love to see more. And just be aware that I'm reaching for some of these and just looking for a fun time. But with that, I appreciate you watching up until this point and hope you have a good day. Also, the Bloodburn symbol kind of looks like the USB symbol. Alright, bye!